so we've discussed circuits with an R and a C, and we've discussed circuits with an R and an L. So it shouldn't surprise you that the next circuit that we want to discuss is one with an L and a C, the last combination, the last possible pair. And then that after we discuss the L and the C um, down the road a little bit, we'll discuss circuits with an R and an L and a C. Now, we're going to take an interlude in this video. Before we get to LC circuits, I'm going to go back to 801 and remind you, review the 801 physics of a harmonic oscillator. Why am I doing this? Well, what we will see in the next video is that an LC circuit, when you take an LC circuit, turn it into a differential equation, it will be exactly the same differential equation as the differential equation for a harmonic oscillator. So to prepare you for that, I want to refresh your memories about an oscillator from 801. So this video will be entirely 801 physics. So what is a harmonic oscillator? Well, here's one. It's a mass on a spring. Here it is at its equilibrium position. If I displace it from equilibrium and let go, it oscillates. This is a harmonic oscillator. This is what we want to um, analyze or review the analysis of today, this video. So there it is going up and down, up and down, up and down. The mass is on the spring. How do, you, how do you think about this? The way I want you to get used to thinking about this is that as this mass oscillates, the energy in this system is sloshing back and forth between being all potential, all kinetic. All potential, all kinetic. So let me explain what I mean. So if I start the mass down here, displaced by whatever that was, about 10 centimeters downward, I'm about to let go. And at the instant I let go, the mass is at rest. It means it has no kinetic energy. But I've, by, by displacing the mass like this, I've stored potential energy in the spring. So this, I, there's potential energy in the spring, um, and I ha there's no kinetic energy, and now I let go, and what happens? So, well, as soon as I let go, that potential energy turns into kinetic energy. And once I let go, when the mass gets back up to here, this was its equilibrium position. So remember, the equilibrium position is here. Now watch what the mass is doing when it passes my um, hand, the hand, this hand here, when, I, when it passes its equilibrium position, it's moving. Okay, So all potential energy, when I let go, but by the time the mass gets to here, all kinetic energy and no potential energy. Why do I say no potential energy? Because this is the equilibrium position of the mass, and we're going to define our zero of potential energy at the, equilib at its, at the equilibrium position. So you should um, think of this motion in your head as um, in four snapshots. Okay? First snapshot is at the instant I let go. All potential energy, the mass is displaced down to here. Second snapshot, right when it passed my other hand. When it was passing my other hand, it, was, it had no potential energy because that was the equilibrium position, no potential energy. But when it was passing my other hand, it had lots of kinetic energy. So all potential, no kinetic. All kinetic, no potential. That's the second snapshot. Third snapshot, at its turning point up here, all potential, no kinetic because it's at rest. Fourth snapshot, when it's coming back down here, no potential, all kinetic. It's moving downwards. And then we go back to here and we repeat the story. So it's a sequence of four snapshots over and over and over again. And as you go from here to there, back up to here, the energy goes from potential to kinetic to potential to kinetic back to potential. And then everything repeats. So watch it one last time, and then we're going to do this in equations. Here we go. OK, it's oscillating back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And the energy is going from kinetic to potential to kinetic to potential to kinetic to potential. So it's that intuition that I want you to take away. That's the intuition that we're going to use when we analyze an LC circuit. But um, we're also going to use the math, actually. So let's, let's do this at the level of math. How do we describe an oscillator like this? Well, like a large fraction of A to 1, the answer is F equals MA. The motion of that mass is described by Newton's second law. Um, so what's um, F? Well, F is minus kx. If I define, the way I'm going to define x is I'm going to 
define x as the downward displacement of this mass. x equals zero is the place where there's no potential energy. When I displace the mass downwards, I'm increasing x with this sign convention. As I increase x, there's an upward, there's, there's, as I increase x, there's an upward force. The force is, x is downwards, the force is upwards. That's this minus sign. And k is the spring constant, property of the spring. So minus kx is equal to ma, but now let's remember what the acceleration is. The acceleration is the second derivative of x with respect to time, d squared x by dt squared. So just as in 802 we've learned, and in fact are still learning, how to take a circuit and turn it into a differential equation, back in 801 you took a setup like this with a mass on a spring, many other setups also in mechanics, and you turned a physical setup like this into a differential equation. Here's my differential equation, except I notice actually that I forgot the m here, so let me add that. And let me now rewrite this differential equation as um, d squared x by dt squared is equal to minus k over m times x. And this is the second order differential equation that describes the motion that we were just doing over here. And um, this is the only second order differential equation that I will expect you to know how to solve in 802. And its solution is a sine or a cosine. It describes sinusoidal oscillatory motion as we saw over here. So to convince you of that, um, I'm, just, I'm gonna write down the solution to this equation as follows. So this equation, this differential equation, describes how x varies with time. And here is the most general, so one of the ways of writing the most general solution to this equation. There's a constant x naught that we'll come back to in just a second. And there's a cos of omega naught times time plus phi. So in this equation, I've just introduced three new constants, x naught, omega naught, and phi. And I have to tell you what they all are and what their role is. So um, this equation is a solution to the differential, this, this function is a solution to the differential equation only if you pick the right value of omega. You have to choose omega to be the square root of k over m. Um, and this function is a solution to this differential equation if I make this choice for omega naught, and I can pick any x naught and any phi. x naught and phi are arbitrary constants. I have to describe their role in a second, but omega naught, I have to make, choose omega naught to be the square root of k over m. So um, it's now something that you should check. You should check that I've done this right correctly. Take this x of t, differentiate it twice with respect to time, and check that what you get is minus k over m times what you started with. So if I take this and I differentiate it twice, I, I'll turn a cos into a sine and then a sine back into a cos. I'll pull omega naught out twice, so there's gonna be an omega naught squared that comes out. And one of those times, one of those differentiations, I'm gonna get a minus sign. So I'll get a minus sign, I'll get omega naught squared, but omega naught squared is k over m. And indeed, I've just checked that this function solves this equation. So um, this in math is the description of what we saw over here. And let's now think about plotting this solution, and in so doing, we'll um, understand what x naught and phi represent. So if I make a graph of x as a function of time, and if I just plot um, this, this equation, I'm gonna pick some values of x naught and, and phi. Um, I'll pick an x naught, which is there, and um, for some choice of phi, we'll get back to phi in a second, I get an oscillatory solution, which looks like that, and then it just keeps going, it keeps repeating. And this oscillation has a period, period over which, after which it repeats, and that period t, when you plot this, that period t is 2 pi over omega naught. This x naught, this x naught tells you how large the amplitude of the oscillation is. So if I go over here 
and I displace the mass downward by about this much. What is that? That's maybe about 10 centimeters. And then I let go and let it oscillate. I have an oscillation with an X naught, which is 10 centimeters. Because you see this, uh, this X, its maximum value is plus X naught, its minimum value is minus X naught. Here it is at its maximum value. There it is at its minimum value. Those are the places where the energy is all potential. The slope dx dt is zero, no velocity, all potential energy. Halfway in between when the oscillating mass crosses x equals zero, so there and there and then again there, no potential energy, but maximum value of the slope, which means maximum value of the kinetic energy, the energy is all kinetic. Um, so uh, that's the interpretation of x naught. It's the amplitude of the oscillation. Now what about phi? Well, what phi, phi is called the phase shift. And phi determines where in time this first peak is. If I had chosen to draw a solution here where phi was equal to 0, this first peak would have been at time 0. By choosing some non-zero value of phi, you shift the pattern left and right. And so, in effect, choosing phi answers the question, what, what's the time when I let go of this? And if I let go of this and I call that time time zero, then I should pick phi equals zero and I should have drawn this with this peak there. The way I've drawn it, um, I'm, I've drawn a solution in which the moment at which I let go of this mass is this time right here. So x starts at its maximum value. You can see the x-axis here. And when I let go of it, it oscillates. When I let go of it, it oscillates. And that oscillation is described by this graph. This graph is a graph of this function. This function solves this differential equation. And this differential equation is f equals ma for this problem. And that, then, is the 801 analysis of a harmonic oscillator. And what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to do the 802 analysis of an LC circuit. And what you will see is that the intuition that I've just brought back into your mind of um, how an oscillator works, and in particular, how you can think about it in terms of energy going from potential to kinetic to kinetic to potential, um, um, sorry, potential to kinetic to potential to kinetic, how you can think of it in terms of energy changing form like that over and over and over and over again. Um, how you can think about it in terms of a differential equation of this form. All of this is going to carry over, but the meaning of the symbols will be different because we will no longer be talking about a mass on a spring. And that's what we'll get to in the next video.